Hello, Vindicators. Welcome to your reckoning, baby. Well, it's official. I had too much to drink last night. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Rick and Morty characters that got killed off. Jesus, the tickets please guy is cut. He, he's, he's got those things. What, what do you call him? I understand. It's um, hard losing a friend. Probably just a smudge on the lens. Smudge on the lens? Smudge on the lens? For this list, we're going over the characters from Rick and Morty who died permanently, mostly. For this reason, we won't be including any of the many, many doppelgangers of the main characters who show up. And of course, if you haven't seen the show yet, consider this your spoiler alert. If there's a character from Rick and Morty you can't believe they killed off for real, portal on down to the comments to tell us. Number 10. Miles Knightley An alien master of the heisting arts, Miles Knightley steals something before Rick does, angering the genius scientist. Calling card from Miles Knightley, a heist artist, aka a hipster dick whose adventures are 60% putting a crew together and 40% revealing that the robbery already happened. To get back at Knightley, Rick decides to crash HeistCon, where Knightley is presenting. After challenging Rick to a heist off, Knightley reveals that he stole Rick's crew and performed the theft already. However, Rick one-ups him and then some by revealing that he used a robot programmed with a heist algorithm to hypnotize not only Knightley's crew, but also the entire convention. So I'm in your crew now. Yeah, well, you're in good company, right everybody? Yes. My God. Despite hating heist movies, Rick proves incredibly adept at using their tropes. A little too much, actually. After ordering the audience to steal the convention itself, they proceed to rip Miles Knightley apart. Your next big score? Steal every square inch of heist con! We don't think there's gonna be a switcheroo on this twist. All right, look, Morty, I did not know that that was gonna happen. That's not on me. Come on, Morty, let's go. Number nine, Japheth. When Rick asks Morty to retrieve wine he left in a dimension where time moves much faster, like Narnia, Morty runs into a dog cow man named Hoovy. Hoovy, dinner's ready. Be right there, sugar hoof. Just helping this young man through a portal with that crate full of alcohol that's been here for decades. Hey, thanks, Hoovy. I, I really appreciate that. Hoovy accidentally follows Morty through his time dimension. Upon returning, he finds his wife dead, and his son Japheth immediately kills him for leaving. It wasn't my fault. Who's then? Who's? The boy from the magic door. As sad as Hoovy's death is, his son's life ends up being more impactful. After attacking Morty in revenge when he returns, Japheth then grows old and has sons of his own who don't believe his stories of the boy and the door. Morty ends up beating him up so much his life gives out. I'm sorry, father. I'm sorry we never believed. He'll come back. Stop him. Stop him. With his dying words, Japheth sets his sons and their whole society against Morty. Talk about a grudge. Number eight, the Vindicators, mostly. A galactic superhero team, the Vindicators are by any other measure a powerful and successful group. However, they made the mistake of asking Rick for help against their nemesis, World Ender. Whoa, Rick! Is that the Vindic Beacon? We're being called to assemble by the Vindicators! I refuse to answer a literal call to adventure, Morty. Let it go to voicemail! Rick gets drunk and proceeds to defeat him while in a stupor, then has time to lay Saw-style traps and puzzles for the superheroes in World Ender's lair. Rick, is, is this a Saw thing? Are you seriously sawing the Vindicators? Morty, I'm a drunk, not a hack. Although a few of them are taken out by these, the rest end up killing each other after the stressful situation brings out their inner conflicts. Only one, Supernova, manages to survive the outing. Still, we may not have seen the last of the group, even if most of them are gone. Rick, Supernova's getting away! Eh, who cares? But she was trying to kill us! Morty, 20 people try to kill me every week. Number 7. Tickets, Please Guy Tickets, please. On a metaphysical story train, Rick and Morty encounter plenty of colorful characters, including an older man who takes their tickets when they're in disguise. Upon encountering them again, the Tickets Please guy proves surprisingly buff and adept at using a human shield. Tickets, please. Dude, I'm sure you've got, like, so many tickets at this point. Rick blows out the window of the train, causing Tickets Please guy to be cut in half. Structural breach. Losing continuity. Morty, hold on to something. 
Keep your head inside. While his mind wakes up in another reality, his bodily injuries soon catch up to him, leading to him being in constant agony across both realities and even inspiring a religion in one. I mean, are you real? Is life real? Okay, I'm calling the nurse because you are not doing this tonight. You're goddamn right I'm not You are not doing this tonight! Ultimately, Morty puts Tickets Please Guy out of his misery. Though it may have also led to the death of a whole reality, too. Happy now? He was suffering! Number 6. Armathy. In order to distract the denizens of a post apocalyptic dimension, Rick injects muscle memory and fighting experience from a dead man's arm into Morty's arm. I'm working with a mixed bag here, so you may not have perfect coordination, Morty. Oh, hey! I, I didn't do that! This makes Morty's arm not only a powerful killing implement, but also semi autonomous and intelligent. While Morty uses the arm, which he dubs Armathy, to vent his frustrations about his parents' divorce by competing in a blood dome, Armathy seeks to find the ones who killed his wife and kids. What's the matter, you piece of crap? Have you ever watched your family burn to death before? <laughs> now I'm gonna whip you. With Morty's help, the two reach the man ultimately responsible, and Armathy apparently kills him before fading away like a ghost. Maybe the lesson we've learned is that whether it's our parents' marriage, a glowing green rock, or an awesome giant arm, sooner or later, we gotta let it go. While his unfinished business has to be finished by Morty, the duo's bizarre friendship was still entertaining while it lasted. Number 5. Gordon Lunis When Rick and Morty decide to look through memories Rick removed from his grandson's mind, we meet Gordon Lunis. Wow, that's incredible. What the heck? In this memory, Morty looks through a telescope at the moon, only to see a sinister man with a mustache in mid-stride on the moon who looks back at him. No one believes him, and the next day, Morty is disturbed to see the man, Gordon Lunas, is now his school guidance counselor. Kids, I'd like to introduce you all to our new guidance counselor, Mr. Lunas. I look forward to helping guide you all towards a brighter future. I believe every student should shoot for the moon. Morty goes to his principal about it, who believes that Morty means Lunas is a deviant. After he confronts Lunas with it, Morty is horrified to find that Lunas has taken his own life, and that what he saw on the telescope was just a smudge. This is just awful for everyone involved. Oh my god, what have I done? What have I done? Number 4. Tony when Rick discovers someone has been using his special toilet, he's understandably furious. Time to meet your maker. He goes to great lengths to find the culprit, and it turns out to be Tony, a soft-spoken office worker and widower. Although Rick decides against killing him, he still tries to rebuff Tony. However, Tony continues using Rick's toilet and is unfazed by his threats. You need the same thing I needed, Rick. You need someone to give you <clears throat> permission to live. What the? I thought you were a shy pooper! You know what shy pooping is, Rick. It's a pointless bid for control. Even a simulation of the afterlife isn't enough to deter him. Rick's simulation pushes Tony to live his life to the fullest, which he does, before tragically dying while skiing on Space Everest. Tony died. Excuse me? He quit his job, started living life to the fullest. He crashed into a tree space skiing down Mount Space Everest. Tony's death is so sad because he was just a nice guy who wanted to be Rick's friend. Rick might have enjoyed his company if he weren't too busy pushing him away. Number 3. Memory Parasites We could be infested with these things, so we gotta keep an eye out for any zany, wacky characters that pop up. Ooh-wee! Whatever you want, Rick, we're here to help! The Smith family house becomes infested with alien parasites. This isn't anything out of the ordinary for them, but the twist is these parasites insert memories of themselves into their victims' brains, making them believe they're trusted friends or family. Rick, these are our family and friends, the people we barbecue with. Have you forgotten the barbecue? This leads to plenty of amusing flashbacks of their adventures with the family, and to a lot of great character designs and concepts. I figured it out, Rick! The parasites can only create pleasant memories! I know you're real because I have a ton of bad memories with you! Eventually, Eventually, Morty figures out that they can only create happy memories, leading to a massacre of everyone they love the most. We'll miss Pencilvester most of all. Number 2. Tammy Guterman Tammy Guterman seemed like just the average high school girl who fell for Rick's best bud, Bird Person. However, she turned out to be a galactic undercover agent that killed her new husband. Tammy, what are you doing? Sit your bird ass down! While Bird Person's death hits hard, he does come back as Phoenix Person. 
When Rick finally comes into conflict with Tammy again, it's because she's chasing one of Rick's daughters, Beth, one of the Beths, who may or may not be a clone. Wait, so there are two of them. Anyway, when both Beths are kidnapped, Tammy has Rick at gunpoint when Morty and Summer come to the rescue, allowing Rick to shoot Tammy dead in revenge for making him go to a wedding. Also for killing his bestie. You made me go to a wedding. Still, Tammy proves useful, even in death. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Fart When Morty decides to stop an assassin Rick sells a gun to, he saves the life of a green, bejeweled cloud, whom Rick nicknames Fart. Oh, good job, Morty. You, you, you killed my best customer, but you saved a mind-reading fart. I like this name, Fart. The telepathic gas is fond of singing and creating psychedelic montages in people's heads. Although it proves surprisingly effective in getting them out of jams, ultimately it wants to return to its own kind through a wormhole. Morty is so sad to see it go. At least until it reveals that it plans to return to kill all carbon-based life in the universe. Carbon-based life is a threat to all higher life. To us, you are what you would call a disease. Wherever we discover you, we cure it. You said yourself that life must be protected even through sacrifice. With much regret, Morty kills Fart. It's one of the first times Morty takes a life on purpose and marks a major development in his character. Goodbye. <laughs> goodbye, innocence, and goodbye, moon men. Goodbye. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.